Thank you for joining today's session. The subject of this session is junk line, make image distribution efficiently and safely. I'm Yuxin Liu from Alibaba Cloud, and I'm one of the core maintainers of junk line. Today, my partner Peng Tao will join me to share this session with you. First, let's take a look at the agenda of this session, which contains three parts. The first part is the introduction of the Dragonfly. The second part introduces the architectures of the Dragonfly so that you can have a quick understanding of the core technical ideas of Dragonfly. The third part will be shared by my partner Peng Tao. It's about Nidar's image service, which is already a sub-project of Dragonfly. Let's get into the introduction part. Here. Let me first try to answer what is Dragonfly. Dragonfly is an open source intelligent P2P based image and file distribution system. Its goal is to tackle all distribution problems in cloud native, uh, native scenarios. The core objectives of Dragonfly is improve download uh, efficiency at a large scale and reduce the pressure of source server and save costly uh, bandwidth. We can take a look at the comparison chart on the right. This chart shows the time consumption of the download, downloading files using native, native mode and Dragonfly mode. The native mode means that all nodes download directly from the source. In the chart, the x axis means the number of the concurrent downloads, and the y uh, axis represents the download time. The green curve means download in native mode, and the red curve uh, means download in Dragonfly mode. Through this chart, uh, we can quickly join the following conclusion. Uh, with the increase of the concurrent downloads, the average download time remains fairly constant when using Dragonfly. At the same time, when the uh, skill reaches a high level, the source server will even go down, which leads to the failure of the download. But using Dragonfly will not have this problem. Uh, let's quickly pass several important, important uh, milestones of Dragonfly. In, 20, in 2015, uh, due to the inter, internal needs of the uh, Alibaba group, uh, Dragonfly was born. Uh, in 2017, uh, Junkfly has undergone um, large-scale internal uh, verifications and uh, decided to open source in the community. In, uh, in 2018, Junkfly supported the, the image distribution and uh, donated to the uh, CNCF Foundation as an um, image distribution tool. As in April this year, it's entered the, the CNCF incubating uh, stage. In the future, Dragonfly still has many uh, directions to explore, and uh, we welcome all of you to join this uh, project. Currently, uh, the Dragonfly community uh, has more than 5,200 stars, uh, more than 70 contributors, and uh, 8 maintainers from 4 different companies. There are more than uh, 50 companies that are already using Dragonfly, uh, including Alibaba Cloud, uh, China Mobile, uh, Bilibili, and uh, so on. Okay, uh, you may be more interested in the core uh, architecture of the Dragonfly than in the community, right? Uh, next, let's start focusing on that. Firstly, Let's analyze the core of Dragonfly, P2P and uh, CDN mechanism. Uh, Dragonfly has two components, DFGET and uh, Subnote. Uh, DFGET is a client-side uh, component that needs to be installed uh, on each node, which takes a role of a peer in a P2P network, uh, including download files from other peers and uh, acting as an uploader to support other peers to download uh, files from it. Uh, Supernode is a server-side component. It mainly um, provides these capabilities. Uh, first, it's a, it's a tracker and a scheduling 
a scheduler in the P2P network that uh, choose appropriate uh, um, downloading, downloading net pass for each peer. For each peer. Uh, secondly, uh, it's also a CDN server that uh, catch, download, catch the download data from source to avoid uh, downloading the same files from source repeatedly. And uh, secondly, and thirdly, <coughs> in fact, uh, the subnode is also a special peer that owns all the contents of all files in the P2P network. Another important thing is the uh, granularity of Dragonfly downloads its blocks instead of the enter file. Each file will be divided into multi blocks according to the 13 rules. Here, we can find, here, uh, we can find that the blocks currently uh, downloaded by each peer are different. Then, let's take a look, quick look at uh, Dragonfly's P2P and the CDN mechanism through a process of downloading files with Dragonfly. Uh, first, uh, we tr uh, trigger download files with Dragonfly at uh, host, and uh, dfget will <coughs> send a request to the subnode, looking forward to obtain the uh, scheduling result that, uh, that is uh, uh, which peer has which blocks. Uh, after subnode uh, uh, re uh, receives the download uh, request, it will first check whether the file is uh, cached locally. Uh, if not, uh, download it from the uh, source and uh, catch it locally. Uh, lo locally. Then the subnode will return the scheduling results according to uh, first the recorded, uh, recorded relationship between the peers and uh, blocks. Uh, to the scheduling uh, organism, organism. If all nodes out of the supernode don't have any blocks of the fair, the supernode will act uh, as a peer node and uh, provide other peers to download the fair blocks. blocks. The scheduling result will not con uh, contain all the blocks. Uh, otherwise, it will only contain a certain number of blocks. Default is 4. After dfget gets the scheduling results, it will download the corresponding blocks from the peers according to the scheduling results. After downloading a block, uh, dfget will do uh, these things. Uh, the first one, uh, report to the supernode that it uh, has downloaded a, a block and then uh, provide, provide, uh, provide the ability to download this block for other peers. Then uh, repeat the uh, steps uh, 2 to 5 until all nodes, until all nodes have um, downloaded the entire file and content. Okay, I hope that um, through the above explanation, you have a good understanding of Dragonfly's core principles uh, so far. We have been talking about the topic of file download. You may be uh, more concerned about uh, how to download uh, an image through Dragonfly. Next, let's take a look at how Dragonfly participates in image distribution. Firstly, we need to know uh, when we run the image pool command, what will happen? According to the OCI distribution spec, uh, specification, the process of pulling an image around uh, retrieving two components, uh, manifest and uh, one or more layers. A manifest is a JSON document which defines an OCI image such as layers, sets, and digest. Uh, layer is uh, the binary form of content that is stored in the registry addressable by a, by a digest. <coughs> then, the process of pulling an image is as follows. The first step is to retrieve the manifest uh, by sending a GET request. And the client should uh, verify the returned uh, manifest signature before fetching layers. And then, pull layers which are not uh, exist. We see that the process of downloading images is through standard HTTP requests. This is uh, similar to uh, download, downloading files. 
If the request to download the image can be downloaded through Dragonfly, then the large scale download of image can use the capabilities of the Dragonfly. So, uh, in order to meet the needs of uh, image distribution, um, Dragonfly added, added a new uh, component, DF daemon. The role of DF daemon is to act as a node, uh, as a node proxy. Uh, responsible for in, uh, intercepting blob file um, download requests and uh, calling dfget for P2P download. Let's take Docker as an example. Then the process of downloading an uh, image through uh, Dragonfly becomes uh, run the Docker pull image command and uh, configure to use uh, to use Dragonfly DF daemon. Uh, then uh, download the required layer blob file through the Dragonfly P2P mechanism. When all years needed uh, for an uh, image are downloaded, uh, then I will, uh, we will get a complete OCI image. At present, uh, Dragonfly has a good practice in combination with Docker and uh, ContentD. Here is the key part of their configuration of image of the image registry proxy. In fact, as a proxy component, uh, DF daemon can almost support all containers engines. As long as the download uh, download download file request is forwarded to DF daemon, the following um, download logic will be hand, handed over to Dragonfly to complete. Okay. At this point, you have learned about the main uh, architecture, architecture design and the process design of the Dragonfly. In addition, uh, Dragonfly has the abilities to provide more advanced fun uh, functionality, such as um, uh, network bandwidth limit, uh, transmission encryption, uh, and so on. Uh, if you are interested, interested in it, uh, welcome to join us. Okay, uh, that's all. Uh, uh, that's all I have to share. Next, uh, let's welcome Peng Tao to share with us about uh, Nader's image service. Thank you. Thank you, Rishi. Hello, everyone. I am Peng Tao. I'm a software engineer from Ant Group. I mostly do work on container runtime in recent years. Today, I'm going to introduce the work that we have been doing the past year, trying to improve Dragonfly with better ways of container image distribution. A new sub-project, Nidus, has been added to the Dragonfly project's family. We'll dive into details on why we do it and how it looks like. Before we start, let's take a look at why we did it. In the container ecosystem, a neutral organization, Open Container Initiative, short as OCI, was created to standardize container image, runtime, and distribution. To do that, OCI has defined an image spec, a runtime spec, and a distribution spec. They worked, they worked together pretty well and helped to increase the prosperity of the container ecosystem. Here, we will focus on the OCI image spec in the rest of the session. At the right side of the slide, we have a very simple illustration of the container image. It is consisted of several JSON files and layer data files. These layer targets the files are container image data layers containing all files and directories of a container image. The OCI image spec defines the format of each JSON files and how these targeted the layer files are to be combined to form a file system view. In recent years, as the container ecosystem evolves, OCI has recognized some of the drawbacks of the image spec. The most important one is that before we start a container, we must pull and decompress this image to the local file system. It adds a lot of delay to the container startup time. What's ironic is that 
even if we only want to access a very small portion of the container image data, we still have to download the entire image. Another less ob obvious but still important problem is that the OCI image can only support deduplication and the layer to touch and the pair touch the layer. There are three consequences of the defect. The first one is that if we change a file's metadata, it will cause the file's data to be copied to the upper layer as well. The second one is that if a file is modified multiple times when building a container image, it will be saved at different image layers and will have to download it multiple times when starting the container, even though only the last modified file data is actually usable for containers. The third one is that deleted files and directories are still saved at lower layers and need to be downloaded when starting a new container, even though they won't be used by containers at all. The OCI community are pretty aware of the drawbacks and started to talk about OCI v2 image spec for some time. Here is a link to a shared document, a brainstorm that, that has happened in the OCI community. Besides discussing what's to be OCI v2 image spec, the community, the community has also seen several projects addressing the existing defects in different ways. For example, the Dragonfly project and the Kraken project speed up image distribution via P2T network. Survey MFS employs file level local cache to avoid downloading the entire image. Snacker tries to solve the deduplication problem with storage, with storage layer snapshot capability. CRFS hacks the TARGZ layout format and make it seekable to support on-demand loading. FileGrain and UMOCI break image layer in layout, saving each file or subfile as, as an object in the image registry. All these are genius works and solve the problem that they deem most important. However, each of them suffer from different problems. For example, the P2P image distribution solution, while fast, still requires downloading an entire image before starting a container. The file, la file layer local cache in survey methods reduces the problem to only require a file to be fully downloaded before processing, but it is still not a full on-demand loading. Snacker relies on storage snapshot capability that is not always available. CRFS requires a fuse mount point for every image layer, ending performance overhead with each layer, which is slow if there are many layers in the image. FileGrain and UMOCI both suffer from the problem of too many objects for each image, which is a great burden on the image registry. Observing this, we designed and implemented the Niners image service to improve the current state. With careful design, Niners image service has these key features. Container image data is downloaded on demand. Files are split into chunks and NIDAS supports chunk level data deduplication. Image metadata and data are flattened so that no intermediate layers are maintained. Let us also support end-to-end -end data integrated check. And it is compatible with the OCI artifacts spec and distribution spec, allowing it to be easily integrate, integrated with the existing image distribution deployments. Let's take a look at how these are done in details. 
First, let's look at the architecture. At a high level, let us provide a user space file system demo as shown in the middle of the picture. When starting a new container, let us only need to download a very small container image metadata layer, which is usually very fast. The demo unfolds the metadata layer and exports file system views to containers via Fuse or Vertile FS protocols. So let us can support both traditional Zone C container and virtualized containers like, like Kata containers. Because NetAS image format is compatible with OCI artifact spec and distribution spec, it can be stored in the Docker registry as well as an OSS in a cloud environment. Users can choose to deploy an a P2P distribution network like Dragonfly between the registry and the compute node. To further accelerate image data distribution in large scale, Inside NetAS schema, an optional local cache can save image data, image data locally to boost future data access. At the core of NetAS, it designs an image format to support all its key features. Each container image is divided into a metadata layer and a data layer. The metadata layer utilizes a Merkle tree, also known as a hash tree, data structure. Every file and directory is a hash node in the tree, with its hash digest calculated either by its data or by its, or by its descendants in the case of a directory. Then we can easily verify a file or a directory by recalculating its digest. Each file's data is cut into fixed-sized chunks. Each chunk has its own hash, set, hash digest calculated by its data saved in a shared data layer. Because the data layer is separated from metadata layer, let us can represent a container image file system view just with the metadata layer. And the data layer can be shared among different metadata layers at the at a data chunk level, so that they, they are shared between different container images. With this chunk data sharing, global chunk level data deduplication is possible as well. After learning about the latest image format, Let's look at how it can benefit us. The immediate benefit is that we can launch containers much faster. In a container startup, startup time benchmark, we measure that the conventional container startup time can be proportional to the size of container images. For example, a busy box can be launched very quickly since its image is pretty small. However, for a large image like TensorFlow, it takes several minutes to start, <coughs> and, all, and most of the time is spent on pulling the container image. However, when, when running with NetAS, we can see that the container image, the container is pretty cons container startup time is pretty consistent, or below four seconds. And at the bottom of the graph, we can see that let us always finish its pulling container image in less than one second, thanks to the image format design that separates image data and, and metadata. Another very useful benefit brought by NetAS is end to end data integrating. With conventional container images, images are downloaded and verified at image layer. Then it is uncompressed to a local file system. After that, we cannot know if it is changed, changed intentionally or unintentionally, or if there is a bit flip or a silent data corruption 
in the local disk. This bothers some non-winding applications for a long time because disk failures and silent data encryption cannot be anticipated. However, NetAS can be configured to always check image data checksum before returning it to container applications. Then it ensures that whatever being read by the container application is always verified and consistent. Even if, even if there is a disk failure or silent, silent data corruption, it can detect that and resort, resort to registries for the original copy of data. There are more benefits of running NetAS image service that we do not cover here. We have open source it as a sub-project of Dragonfly. We, we encourage the audience to check it out on our GitHub repository. In future, we plan to introduce better integration with the con container image ecosystem, such as integration with BuildKit, etc. We want to support more data compression algorithm as well. Currently, only LZ4 is supported. And we are looking at flexible chunk size and flexible duplication levels. Last but not least, we will propose to the OCI community to let, let us serve as a reference implementation to the OCI V2 image stack. Okay, we have finished all the introduction. Thanks for watching. Here is our contact information, the Dragonfly website, the GitHub repository, the Twitter handle, and the LinkedIn talk group. Please feel free to contact us in any method you prefer, and we can answer questions in the Q&A session. Thank you.